Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, so far we have looked at various uh, interesting results in information theory, various applications of information theory. More fundamentally, we have looked at the channel capacity of various channels in information theory. Let us change tracks now and look at another aspect or another important uh, application of information theory and that is towards source coding. Okay, so we are going to briefly look at techniques. for source coding and what we do in source coding uh, is basically or this can also be thought of as source coding or basically the aim is towards compressing the data. So, it can also be thought of as source coding So, if you look at most of the modern compression standards for instance, what makes communication possible of course, what makes communication possible of uh, uh, communication possible at high at the high data rate in modern wireless communication systems is the development of modern communication technologies. But together with that what makes communication of for instance not just audio and data, but what makes communication of rich multimedia content such as audio and video right audio images and video possible is also the def, uh, development of efficient compression techniques because if you look at it a typical audio file or a video file contains a large amount of the raw file contains a large amount of data which has to be appropriately compressed so that it can be transmitted over the communication channel which has a practical bandwidth constraint correct. So, these communicate data compression or source coding technologies or source coding techniques which in turn are motivated and justified by information theory has have played as much a role in the development of modern communication techniques as have been played by the development of modern communication wireless communication technologies ok. So, this is very important. in modern communication especially multimedia content such as audio, video images etc correct basically we can think of this together and not just in communication but also in storage to minimize the storage content to generate to store the huge amount of multimedia to store and archive correct to store and archive the huge the huge volumes of multimedia data say in the form of video and images currently being generated over the internet and several applications it is important to efficiently store them. So, compression plays a very important role there towards storage and archival of this large amounts of multimedia content that is being generated all right. Now, to put simply so we are changing tracks from channel coding to looking at source coding and to put simply what source coding implies uh, is the following that is if you look at a source let us say we call it x and this generates various symbols for instance x0, x1. So, these are the various symbols in time that are generated 
various symbols in time that are generated by the source. And uh, now the source symbols of course, as we have seen before each source symbol for instance x k is a symbol at time instant k it can be thought of as belonging to the set fixed set of symbols s 0 s 1 up to s m minus 1 this we also said is basically the source alphabet. So, the symbols are generated from a So, the symbols are generated from a source alphabet comprising of symbols alphabet comprises of the symbols s naught s 1 up to m minus 1. So, it is a source alphabet of size m ok. This is something that we have already seen before that is we have a source which is generating these symbols ok. Now, let us define another important kind of source although we have not uh, paid uh, we have not accurately defined it previously this is an assumption which was implicit in all the analysis that was that has been carried out thus far is that these different symbols are independent independent identically distributed that is what we mean is that since we are sources generating right several symbols in time what we mean is that the symbol that is probabilities of symbol of various symbols at at any time k do not do not depend on the symbols that are generated previously. do not depend on the symbols generated previously such a source is termed as a discrete this is also known as a discrete memoryless source. So, what do we mean by this discrete memoryless source that is what we are saying is that if you look at any symbol x k generated at time instant k the probability that x k is s naught does not depend on what are x k minus 1, x k minus 2 and so on. It does not depend on any of the previous symbols correct. So, each of these symbols are generated in an independent identically distributed fashion ok such a source is known as a discrete memoryless source. To qualify it or to put it mathematically what we mean is basically although it is very intuitive this notion is very intuitive that is the reason that p of x k equals s i conditioned on x k minus 1 x k minus 2 so on up to in fact you can take any number of past symbols that is so on up to x 0 this is simply equal to the probability x k equal to s i equals a fixed quantity equals a fixed quantity p i ok. So, the probability is independent the probabilities are fixed. So, what you can see from here is that probability of each symbol are fixed and do not
do not depend on the past symbols ok do not depend on the past symbols and such a source is known as a discrete such a source is known as a discrete memory less source and this is one of the most commonly employed source models ok. This discrete memory less source is one of the most commonly employed source models. this is one of the most commonly employed source models ok. Now, let us come to now we have described the source model that is we are going to consider a discrete memory source which is one of the simplest one of the simplest models that can be employed to model sources and it is also one of the most commonly occurring and one of the most frequently employed models to model the source alright. It is frequently applicable in practicing since several sources one would encounter can be uh, closely modeled uh, can be either directly modeled or closely approximated as discrete memory less sources. Now, let us come to the the central theme that is source coding the central theme which is your the central theme is source coding. Now, what do we do in source coding? We convert each symbol to a sequence of binary symbols. So, let me write this down. We convert each symbol we convert each symbol to a sequence of binary information binary symbols or binary bits let us say or code. So, this sequence of binary so this sequence of binary symbols binary bits is also termed as a code word. So, each symbol is basically con converted into code word uh, represented in terms of binary information bits ok. Now, what is our aim in source coding obviously remember we said it is used towards data compression. So, we want to minimize the number of bits right intuitively obviously uh, the smaller the number of bits the more if easier it is to communicate over a channel the more easier it is to store. So, we would like to minimize the number of bits and in particular a useful metric is minimize the average number of bits that is used to represent each symbol ok. So, rather than looking at each symbol in isolation, we would like to minimize the average number of bits that can be used to represent a symbol. So, we would like to minimize. So, or we would like to strive towards minimizing. minimizing the average number of bits to represent minimize the average number and this is the key average number of bits used to represent. So, we have to represent it in a compact fashion correct and this mapping from symbols to code. So, this mapping from the symbols to code is uh, symbols to code word is code words. So, the mapping is 
this mapping from symbols to code word this is what is termed as a code all right so you'd like to construct an efficient code which maps the symbols to the code words in such a fashion that the average number of bits the average length of each code word used to represent a symbol is minimized okay and naturally there are different kinds of codes that are possible different categories of code constructions okay let us look at some of the most characteristics some of the most popular ones okay so for example let us look at a typical code let us say m is equal to 4 that is the size of the source alphabet is 4 okay source alphabet is of size 4 okay and uh, so therefore we have s0 s1 s2 s3 now let's say s0 is represented using 1 comma 1 uh, s1 is represented using 1 comma 0 s2 is represented using 0 comma 1 and s3 is represented using 0 comma 0 so we have four symbols okay so we have four symbols we are representing each code or each symbol is represented using two bits okay and uh, and therefore the number of bits is 2 for each symbol and this is termed as a so this mapping is what is the code and this is also a fixed length code you can see that this is a very specific code in which each symbol is represented using a fixed number of all the symbols are used represented using the same number of bits which in this case is 2 so this is a fixed all it's not necessary that all symbols right be represented using the same number of bits in fact we will see that for optimality this is not generally true that is to get the code which represents each symbol using the lowest number of bits uh, which represents uh, uh, which minimizes the average number of symbols per bit all right so however this code which represents each symbol using a uh, using e in which all symbols are represented using the same number of bits is termed as a fixed length code and decoding of fixed length code is very simple because you know each symbol corresponds to a fixed set of bits let us say the number of bits is 2 so you take the first two bits decode the symbol next two bits decode the symbol next two bits decode the symbol so this kind of a code is uniquely decodable these are the norm these are the terms that we are going to keep introducing uniquely decodable in the sense that given the bits I can uniquely reconstruct the transmitted symbols okay so let us note here that a fixed length code is very simple although it might not be efficient it has a low complexity of decoding further it will also be uniquely decodable We will look at this term a little bit later what we mean by uniquely decodable but you can see roughly it means that given a set of code bits I can uniquely reconstruct the symbols that have been transmitted. For instance if we have 1 0 0 1 0 0 now you look at the first two bits we know it is a fixed length code so 1 0 will be S 1 0 1 will be S 2. 0 3 can be s 3 and so on so this is uniquely do so it is very simple and it is 
uniquely decodable. So you look at groups of two bits each starting from the first bit. So you take the two bits, decode it, next two bits decode and keep progressing so on. Okay. Now let us next come to a naturally we have fixed length code. Obviously if it is not a fixed length code then it is known as a variable length code. Now in a variable length code for instance again let us take an example of m equal to 4 for instance we have S0 let us take an example S0 represented by 0, S1 represented by 1. S2 represented by 0, 0, S3 represented by 1, 1. Okay. Now, the variable length code obviously you can see different symbols are represented using different numbers of bits. different symbols are represented by different numbers of bit and further observe in this case there is a problem. It is a variable length code for instance here we have for instance for 0 we have 1 bit this is 1 bit. two bits and two bits. Now there is a problem for instance example what is the problem let us look at the problem and the problem should be apparent to you here if you look at the transmitted sequence 0 either correspond to S0 followed by S2 or it can correspond to S0 S0, S0 or it can correspond to S2 followed by S0. Okay. So, the same sequence 0, 0, 0 can correspond to either S0, S2, S0, S0, S0 or S2, S0. Okay. So, note this problem. So, same sequence what is the problem here in this example? the same sequence can correspond either to S0, S2, S2, S0 or S0, S0. So, these three sequences, so given the received bit sequence 0, 0, 0, either the stored bit sequence or the bit sequence 0, 0, 0 at the receiver, one cannot uniquely decode the transmitted symbol sequence or the transmitted source coded sequence. It can either correspond to S2, S0, S0, S2 or S0, S0, S0. So, this code is not uniquely decodable. Okay. So, this code hence code is not not uniquely decodable okay so original sequence what do we mean by the original sequence what do we mean by uniquely decodable? Let us now formally define 
what we mean by we say a code is uniquely decodable code is uh, uniquely decodable if the original symbol sequence if the original sequ symbol sequence uniquely decodable if the original if the original source sequence or the original source symbol sequence original source sequence can be reconstructed perfectly from the can be reconstructed perfectly from the coded sequence. So, the original symbol sequence can be reconstructed perfectly from the coded sequence, the code is uniquely decodable. In this case, we have seen that there exists at least one that is 0, 0, 0, right, corresponding to which the symbol sequence, the corresponding symbol sequence cannot be decoded uniquely. There are multiple symbol sequences which give rise to the same code sequence, right, it is a many to one mapping. It is not a one to one mapping and therefore, this code is not uniquely decodable which creates problems for us because either when the symbols have been received at the receiver or if the symbols have been stored and you are trying or if the bits have been stored and you are trying to reconstruct the original symbol sequence, then it cannot be the symbol sequence is unknown, it cannot be reconstructed uniquely. All right. So, there is, there is an information loss that happens in the source coding process and naturally this is not preferable. Okay. So, therefore, what we are going to do, so what we have seen here is we have seen, now that does not mean that all variable length codes are not uniquely decodable. Here we have considered a variable, for instance, different symbols are different number of numbers of bits, different numbers of bits. So, this is a variable length code or what is also termed as a VLC sometimes. Now, of course, it is clear that for a fixed length code is always going to be uniquely decodable, correct. As long as many symbols are not mapped to the same fixed length code word, the fixed length code because of its nature is uniquely decodable, correct. However, the variable length code, this is not the case. Now, what are the conditions to be satisfied by a code, variable length code or for that matter any code for it to be uniquely decodable and how do we construct such code? Okay. So, these are some of the aspects that we will look at in the subsequent models. Thank you very much.